Hoshiai no Sora, in English Stars Align, is a production that draws our attention with lots of drama, whether it comes to its plot or the anime industry itself. In other words, the original creator Kazuki Akane did an oopsie and an oopsie was done to him. Pew news. Firstly, we got to know about his sloppy mistake relating to the copyright laws. In the anime's ending, characters dance to the ending song. It's fun and it focuses on expressing the protagonist's personalities through movement. After all, Ryoma Ebata was involved. However, some of the dance sequences were taken from two dancers without their permission. They posted videos disclosing the obvious, but as it was later stated, unintentional plagiarism. Thankfully, the case was peacefully resolved and both performers are now credited. The second controversy is much more devastating. The anime was originally planned as a 24-episode series. In that length in mind, the production had been in progress for over two years. Two years of creative, exhausting work that would give us an exceptional title. I really believe that. Unfortunately, the production committee suddenly appeared and shortened the anime to 12 episodes merely a few months before its emission. I can't imagine how stressful and frustrating it was for the creators, especially Akane, who was so engaged in his passion project. He tried to patch the production as much as he could, but clearly a lot of painful compromises were made. However, although the title we are able to experience isn't the most coherent or well-paced, it tries its best and, the most important, it has a heart in the right place. In the interview for TBS Anime Festa 2018, Akane said, I had a strong feeling of wanting to try and create not only animation simply about the funny and weird aspects of the current times, but that also properly expresses the suffering and worries of young children in particular. It would be great if we managed to successfully trace the emotions and thoughts of young kids into a drama. The main protagonist who is supposed to convey the director's wishes is, among others, Maki Katsuragi. We meet him at the exact moment when he moves into a new flat. This sunshine certainly likes stairs much more than some stupid elevators and a few floors are nothing for him. The thing is, the new house isn't much a home but rather a temporary shelter. Maki and his mom are constantly running away from his abusive father. At school he meets Toma Shinjo, an old friend who has a complicated relationship with his family and emotional issues. Toma is the president of a soft tennis club, which is about to be disbanded because of its poor results. But please don't mind the cliché. After seeing how adorable and probably athletic Maki is, he decides to recruit him. In the end we end up watching the struggles of the middle school children, giving their all not only on the court, but also in their lives. Stars Align surely shows a vast array of hardships and abuse encountered by those kids. However, it's so vast that sometimes the anime drowns in it. The imbalance between violence and kindness can be overwhelming, especially when we consider our protagonist's parents. We have abusive parents, disappointed parents, helicopter parents, intolerant parents, mentally ill parents, question mark. Because of this, the soft tennis club looks more like the drama club from Beasts, where only students with problematic backgrounds were invited. And the closer to the end of the series, the more hyperbolized the conflicts are. Additionally, some plot points are barely touched, which feels unfair for us as well as for the characters. But believing that the anime has a heart in the right place, we know that Akane just wants everyone to be included in his animated catharsis. During the same interview, he declares that Those are the types of wounds that are forgotten by people when they become adults. But I want to try properly express them and write about how the characters will overcome them and grow up. In this sense, I also want adults to remember their own, the wounds that they used to carry, and realize that they are the ones hurting children now. I want to make it into a drama that causes people to feel what is happening in real time. 
the greatest thing in this anime is that we clearly see Akane's intentions. He wanted to show that any kind of suffering of the young audience is visible and valid. And, having heart in the right place, the protection brings the viewers consolation and empowerment. Sometimes it comes in small or even unnoticeable elements, for example, treating different body types, especially bigger ones, not as a joke. There are scenes that should be added to the next Gillette commercial, like the one in the locker room. Some random chat comes in the soft tennis club room and starts flexing because that's what chats do. The manager Yuta feels visibly uncomfortable, but he's too intimidated to ask Chad to stop. Then other team members immediately decide to help. Bro, not cool. It seems like nothing, just a few minutes, but I assure you, a little bit of that kindness can sometimes save a person. Although having so little episodes, but a heart in the right place, Akane decided to dedicate one whole episode for exploring LGBTQ plus issues. And it's delicate and understanding and empathetic. That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Besides that, we encounter a lot of scenes of not being ashamed of showing emotions, hugging and protecting your best friend by threatening his abusive father to kill him. Hmm. As the director said, I want to make it into a tale of friends who do not lick each other's wounds at all, but instead fill up and compensate for them. Hoshiai no Sora has a lot more to offer besides its plot. We can see how much the series is loved by its creators, by the pure effort put into details. The designs of some places, especially rooms, are really great. They expose the protagonist's characters, disclose further interests or set the mood. Thomas' room is full of surprises. He appears to be a geology geek who loves cactuses and dinosaurs. Ryoma's place is painted mostly in warm browns, emphasizing his comforting and protective nature. On the other hand, Nao's dining room is in very cold colors. It feels empty and sterile, which symbolizes the unhealthy relationship between him and his parents. The animation and direction are an interesting aspect on its own. We are able to observe that Akane experiments and uses various techniques. He often quickly switches to different perspectives. During these few seconds, the boys are just dragging themselves to the finish line, but we see them up front, from the side and from above. However, the director doesn't mind a meaningful pause here and there. During the conversation between Toma and Maki when the latter reveals the truth about his father, we have this. The silence shows how difficult it is for Maki to talk about his traumas even with his best friend. We feel how he gathers his strength and we understand the importance of the confession. But my favorite Akane's technique is that he presents dramatic moments through disruptions. The music suddenly stops. The scenes are abruptly cut. Our shots are constantly fading to black. I'm not surprised that some find such directing contrived, but personally I really like it. The moments gain more emotional weight. It feels fresh and I always appreciate when creators try to do something differently. 
Akane chose soft tennis for a very specific reason. He says, even though the number of competitors is enormous among middle schoolers, it cuts to about half when they become high schoolers, and when they become college students and adults, almost nobody is doing it anymore. In a way, we can say that it is a sport with no self-interest. It is neither for the sake of earning money nor for becoming famous. I thought this sport was as pure as adolescence. Connecting to this, a tennis racket is immensely meaningful throughout the whole show. We can assume that the racket symbolizes the protagonist's hearts, which of course are in the right place. Because of their vulnerability, they are often objects of violence. Sometimes they end up completely smashed or the characters aren't able to use them. However, throughout the episodes we will notice how rackets are cherished by their owners and how the broken ones are replaced thanks to other people's support. That's why it's so painful when the opening of the last episode is disrupted at the moment which shows a broken racket. I believe this expresses not only the feelings of the protagonists, but also the creators themselves. During the series we get to know Kanako Mitsue, a character passionate about drawings and animation, who becomes friends with Maki and the rest. Whether it's correct or not, I read her character as an alter ego of Akane, who conveys his thoughts about the industry. Kanako directly tells us about her desire to create, even if that's not the most respectful or lucrative job. Before she gets to know Maki, the girl adjusts her work to her audience preferences, she just enjoys the process and positive comments. When Kanako becomes inspired by the soft tennis club, she wants to evolve her style, to try something new, to change. However, this meets with a negative backlash. She is frustrated, but she just doesn't want to stop doing what truly really excite her. Although her art is sometimes sloppy, there are lapses and flaws, she tries her best. Like Akane, who put his whole heart in the production and even after the devastating blow after breaking his own racket, I believe it was the right place for it. Thank you for listening. It was Paulina's Broken English. See you in the next video.